crossover to Kigali, Rwanda, where our Eugene Anango is joining us via Skype. Eugene, it's good to see you. A good morning to you. So the EIC week, uh, we've talked about that they have mentioned a little about what it is. it covers. And in Rwanda, it's a big deal. There isn't much of it we're hearing here in Kenya as far as activities. Talk to us about uh, what's been lined up. Right. Uh, the activities around the ESC week actually kicked off uh, 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 one day ago. And it is a big deal right here in Rwanda because uh, the ministry that is in charge of East African Community Affairs believes that it is very vital that all Rwandans get to understand the importance of the integration process. So there have been a series of activities that have been lined up uh, right here in uh, this particular event, uh, one of them being a forum that involves the youth on uh, you know, creating awareness on young entrepreneurs who have activities that have to do with selling and buying of uh, goods and services. And so in the northern province, uh, that is where this activity was taking place. And uh, the ministry was there to organize this particular forum where a couple of young people who already have businesses uh, that are, you know, operating uh, in cross borders around the region uh, got to share their challenges and, of course, some of the opportunities that uh, they have in the East African community. And a lot of them giving testimonies on uh, some of the achievements that they have been able to see uh, from the integration process, including the free travel uh, and then free uh, operation of their services across borders, using their IDs to cross, uh, you know, within Rwanda, uh, Uganda, and Kenya. And so uh, this is actually what is going on. And other activities will be brought back here in Kigali, where there will be some other sessions where citizens right here in Kigali will be able to also exchange on the importance of the integration process. Sophia. Right, Eugene, and of course there has been some progress, as you've mentioned, then as far as the integration uh, of the East African countries is concerned, but there's still suspicions that we've witnessed uh, amongst the countries, whether it's in business uh, deals, you know, uh, moving around, shifting from one end to the other. Uh, Tanzania in the recent past has been on the spot uh, light for that. The common currency taking too long to become a realization for East Africans. So there's still a long way to go. Indeed, there is still a long way to go. In fact, um, this year, the target group is the youth. And uh, when it comes to young people, the East African community story has been something that sort of leaves them out. A lot of young people don't really feel uh, interested in the East African community issues because most of the time when they hear about the East African community, it's about you know, businesses, infrastructure, the standard gauge railway, uh, you know, the common market protocol. But young people really want to hear things that they can relate to, cultural issues, exchanges on art and, and, and things like that. So at the end of the day, I think there is a lot that needs to be done in terms of ensuring that everybody is on board when it comes to this issue of East African community. Actually, hope is not really lost uh, when it comes to some of these things that we still see a delay in them. Uh, most of uh, things that are done in groups, this is what we've been told by these officials when we ask them this question. They always say that, you know, things that have many other parties involved usually take time. And so uh, citizens will just have to be patient in order to be able to see the full fruits of the integration process. Yeah, and before I let you go, Anangwe, one of the things we know that brings about patriotism, whether it's to a country or a region, for each country there's a national anthem. And there is an anthem uh, for the EAC. And I remember Timothy Otieno covering and even interviewing people and whether they know the anthem. Very many people had no idea it even existed. So some of the small things, perhaps, or not so small, uh, that the EAC would work on to make sure even the youth, as they focus on them, gets a feel uh, part of the community, isn't it? Very true indeed. And, and what is being done to solve this um, is, is, is the push that in every function, they, when they play the anthems of those individual countries at those particular functions, at least the ESC anthem is also played. And I, I have been part of the preparations for the Jamhuri Day celebrations uh, that are you know, coming up in, 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 in December. And part of what we were even discussing before we play the Kenyan uh, and the Rwandan anthem right here, that will be for the Kenyans living in Rwanda. Um, the ESC anthem was also slotted in there. So I think this is part of uh, the ongoing push uh, for at least everybody to familiarize themselves 
with the ESC anthem. But all, uh, in all uh, honesty, I think they still need for more awareness on even what this anthem really means for East Africans. Are, are they relating to it? Are they owning it? Do they feel any difference uh, when, when, when they sing it, when they involve themselves in being part of singing that anthem. So indeed, there's a lot that still needs to be done. And even us as media need to really play a bigger role in ensuring that this uh, message is actually going home. All Sophia. right. Thank you so much, Eugene Nangwe, for that. Uh, Eugene Nangwe, live in Kigali, uh, keeping us posted on the activities there and as far as the EAC week is concerned.